um, logarithm for applied situations. And um, the situation here is a farmer is monitoring an insect plague and finds that the area affected by the insect is given by this formula where n is the number of weeks after the initial observation. So we can see here that it's going to be um, uh, the insect plague is going to be growing. Um, the amount of area, sorry, that the insect plane is affecting is going to be growing because it's a base 2 function um, and there hasn't been any um, reflection on any axis. So the first question says use te technology to help you sketch the graph of a to the um, a um, function a with n being the variable. Hence, uh, estimate the time taken for the affected area to reach 5,000 hectares, then check your answer to a using logarithms. So what we're going to do is use the graph mode here again. So I'll make this bigger if I can. No, it doesn't want to help me. Come on. Come on. All right. Fine. I've got a little app there that makes you, the window get bigger pretty quick, but it doesn't want to work. So here we go. I've got my um, function in here. Uh, I've, I've actually changed, so using the spanner, if you are using Desmos, you can change the um, values. Um, the reason I've changed it to negative 100 and 5,000 is um, this start, starts at 1,000, so it's probably good to, um, you know, go from 0 to 5,000. 5, you know, I feel like it, that's probably going to be ballpark, and uh, negative 1 to 5, I've just chosen that there. So, um, looks like I might need to go to 6 for the next... Oh, I'm not sure, actually. I'll just go to 6 just in case. So there we go, we've got our function there and it's we can see it's growing. We can see it starts off at when um, n is zero, so the number of weeks that have lapsed since the um, the insects have start, started affecting the area. It's, there's a, so there's a thousand hectares have been affected. And then we can see that the value is growing. So uh, they've asked us to sketch it. Now what I'm gonna do is just sort of write down these values and I'm just gonna go every one. Um, it's sort of more of a rule of thumb, um, but you may find that if you've got, you know, an axis of five, let's do five, then you'll find that that'll be more useful. So I'm going to write down these coordinates. We've got one, one, six, let's call it, yeah, two, five. Oh, you've got zero, you better write that one down. Zero, one thousand. Let's move across to two. So two comma two, six, three, nine. Next one. Three, four, two, eight, seven, and um, oh, looks like it's probably all I can fit in. The rest is going pretty high, so maybe the four points will do. Okay, so I'm going to go back into the one note, and we're going to sketch that, and um, so yeah, see how we go. So, draw an axis. You probably have some grid paper or something like this in an actual exam, so make it a bit easier. And I've just drawn an axis there. I've seen that A and N. So you just put your variables on the end. And then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Not perfect, but that'll do. Um, and this is the area affected. And that's in hectares. Now I may need to move that because I've got to chuck in some pretty big numbers. Oh, try that again. So close to nailing that. There we go. Lovely. And on the bottom, you've got the um, um. I guess I'd say it's just time. Time since. Initial observation, and that's in weeks. All right, next we're going to label it. So I'm going to start off with 1,000, 2,000, and then on the x axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now we can put in our values, which I'll do in green. So the 0, 100 dot there, 1, 1625, 2, 2, 6, 3, 9, 3, 
4287. Okay, and then I'm just going to join the dots with a nice smooth arc. Oh, nearly, nearly. It's going to have to do, and I'm just going to call that function a of n. Lovely. So we've drawn a um, a graph there. Now it says hence estimate the time taken for the affected area. Um, what I am going to do, the word estimate is thrown around a lot in the IB course. I'm just going to put that in and actually find what that is using the, the glass pad. You could guess if you want. Okay, that's not going to come up, so I'm just going to put in, change it to Y. There we go. And we go across and it's three point intersection is 3.32 and then 5,000. All right, now we can always check our graph, <laughs> graph's a little dodgy, but um, if I went across on 5,000, yeah, I, get, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually not such a bad graph. Yeah, about that. Now we're going to check that answer using logarithms. So um, I'll go back to the OneNote and um, we'll use logarithms there to um, see if that answer is correct. So here we go. Um, first step, go in green. 5,000 is equal to 1,000 times by 2 to the 0 0.7n. Now we know straight up that we can divide both sides by a thousand. Remember to get rid of those coefficients from the last lesson. We're left with this here, five is equal to two to the power of 0 0.7n. Next step, logs help get the unknown index the numerator. We can now bring that um, 0 0.7n, um, which is going to appear just now, to the uh, numerator. And I'm going to divide the other, um, both sides by log 2. Like that. Now I can change it to log base 2, 5 if I wanted. And what's the opposite of times in by 7 and 10 is dividing by 7 over 10. So, you know, you can always, if you're getting a little stuck, make that 7 over 10, and then, you know, if you divide by it, it's going to be 10 over 7. So what's our answer? 10 log 2, 5 on 7. Now what we've done is we've found an exact answer. If we put this in our calculator, we're expecting the number 3.32 to come out. So I really hope that happens. So I'll put it over here and throw it in. So I'm going to have to go fraction um, and then go 10 function log 5 on 7 log 2. And we've got 3.317, which, yeah, that matches up nicely, so that worked. And they probably want you to get the um, the 5,000 as well, so if you plug 3.32 into your formula, out should pop that as well. Um, so, yeah, that's us checking your answer using logarithms, and we found this answer in exact form as well. Um, now, basically, uh, what I'd like you to do now that we've been through one of these is you know, um, practice using a class pad, finding the answer, but also practice use of logarithms to confirm these intersection points. There's uh, plenty of questions to practice on and see through the booklet. And um, yeah, you know, um, don't always take it for granted. Um, I, I quite like question 23 because it's a little bit more counterintuitive, especially for the initial um, question. So please make sure you work through this and yeah, um, the answer on the one note to the right if you check. Thanks. Hopefully this uh, video is helpful.